the turn of the century, fortunes in gold and cattle were won and lost in the gambling casinos of the Southwest. One of these fortunes might have been lost and a murder unavenged, but for one man, Rex Allen stars as the Frontier Doctor. Inside the brawling, wide-open town of Bango, 20 miles west of Rising Springs, was Tennessee Smith's famous saloon and gambling establishment. I knew and liked Tennessee, so I was not surprised to receive an invitation to a special gathering of hers. But I was not prepared for the unusual reason for the gathering or the tragic event which followed it. Thank you very much. Well, there she is. Gentlemen. Good evening, Tennessee. Hello, Doc. Hello, Tennessee. I've got an announcement to make. First, everything but the gambling is on the house tonight, so eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs> Oh, come, Tennessee. You know, you're not exactly noted for handing things out for nothing. I'm quitting business. After tonight, Tennessee Smith will be closed. Well, what's the idea, Tennessee? You're getting married? Who's the lucky man? I'm marrying nobody, Frank. I'm retiring and leaving town. Oh, it'll take me a few days to settle my affairs. But tomorrow I'm taking the coach over to Elkton and buy myself some clothes and get prettied up for that trip. There's a... one more thing. I've always counted Dr. Bill Baxter as one of my dearest friends. As a token of our friendship, I should like you to have this. Isn't that a dandy? <laughs> Look at it. Oh, that's right. That's nice. nice. <laughs> Thank you, Tennessee. I'll, I'll treasure it always. Well, that's about it, gentlemen. Now, let's make this a night to remember. It's got to last us a long, long time. Best of luck, Tennessee. Good luck. The next morning, Tennessee took the coach to Elkton to do her shopping. So glad you come. Miss Tennessee, she just lies here. She won't talk, she won't move, she won't do nothing. Just stares into space. You'll be all right, Delilah. How long has she been like this? I guess since she was shot. They took her off the coach like that. Can you hear me, Tennessee? Can you hear me? If I could have gotten some reaction from her, move her head, or any other sign of the will to live. It was impossible to remove the bullet without causing her death. The once laughing, happy-go-lucky Tennessee was doomed to spend her remaining days in the grip of complete paralysis. Gentlemen, Tennessee's condition is very serious. There's a neurosurgeon in San Francisco that specializes in this type of operation, but Unless she shows some signs of not being completely paralyzed, it'd be useless to call Dr. Williams in on the case. Tennessee was shot deliberately. I'm asking you men to help me find the one who shot her. Excuse me. Dr. B, 
I know Miss Tennessee is awful sick. But she told me if anything ever happened to her, I was to give you this letter. Now I got to go see about my baby. <laughs> me executor and leaves her estate in its entirety to a Miss Penny Chalmers, whose address is Mont Blanc School for Girls, St. Louis, Missouri. Wonder who she is. I'll send her a telegram and tell her to come out here right away. Ooh. What are you gonna do about Tennessee till she gets here? I'm gonna move her over to the hospital in Elkton. Sheriff is executor. I want you to seal the cash register, the safe, and her desk. And padlock this place until Penny Chalmers gets here. A few days later, in answer to my telegram, Penny Chalmers arrived. When do you plan to take her to San Francisco for the operation, Doctor? Well, not until she regains consciousness and gets some of her strength back. Wouldn't be safe to move her in this condition. Is there anything I can do to help? I don't think so, not now. Let's go out to her mansion. I want you to meet some of her friends. Unusual. Tennessee's an unusual woman. Mr. Walt Bodine, Sheriff Butler, yeah. Mr. McNally. How do you do? This is Miss Penny Chalmers. How do you do, Miss Chalmers? We're all old friends here of Tennessee Smith's. Naturally, we're very curious about you, how you happen to know her and so forth. That is, of course, if you don't mind telling us. Oh, not at all, Mr. Bodine. You see, I've known Martha Smith. I presume that's the lady that you refer to as Tennessee. Ever since I can remember, she paid for my way from infancy on up through finishing school. Was she your guardian? Well, when I was old enough to wonder about that, I wrote and asked her. She answered me that she'd known my parents and had promised to take care of me if anything happened to them. Shortly after that, my parents disappeared. That was quite wonderful of her. Yes, it was. My only regret is that I was never able to meet and thank her for all that she did for me. You never met her? No. I wrote and asked her if I could visit her many times, but she always had some reason why I shouldn't. See. I guess she didn't want me to know how she made her living. Does it make any difference? No. Well, the important thing is to get her to San Francisco and to get her well. That's going to take money. Tennessee kept her money in the bank I manage, and I can probably help explain her financial position. Oh, we appreciate your help, Mr. McNally. Sure, if you'll be a witness, we'll go through her personal effects. All right, Doc. I put on has been broken. This desk has been forced open. You think there's a connection between this and her being shot? I wonder. Look here in the dust. It's a good clear set of fingerprints. <laughs> that theory's awful new yet, Doc. I've been reading some articles by a man named Francis Galton. He claims that no two sets of fingerprints are exactly alike. And just for curiosity, I've been trying it out on some of my patients and friends, and so far he's right. What's that got to do with the fingerprints on the desk? Well, if there's any connection between the desk being broken open and Tennessee being shot, these prints could belong to the man who did it. But how can the prints help catch him? 
You can't lug the desk around matching the fingerprints of everyone in town. That's true. What you do is lift them. Well, uh, how do you do that? I think I've got enough stuff in my medical bag to do it. Would you mind getting it out of the buggy, Penny? Of course not. a month. Let's see where the money went to. I can tell you. Here you are. Thank you, Penny. I'll put it right here. You were just going through Tennessee's bank book. As I was about to say, you'll find that she has a very low balance. Less than $50? That's right. You see, for the past nine months, Tennessee withdrew her capital at the rate of $10,000 a month. She wiped out everything she had. Well, did you ask her why? I did, but she never told me. Did she draw it out in cash, or have you transferred it to another city? She drew the money out in cash. There's the motive for your shooting. Robbery. Yeah. $90,000. Well, the 90000 and this mansion are the extent of her estate, Penny. We'll try to get the money back for you. was obviously attempting to steal the fingerprints that I'd lifted from Tennessee's desk. I don't blame you for packing a gun, Doc. You got any idea who it was? No, it happened so quick I didn't get a good look at him. He was masked. But I've got my suspicions. Ooh. The only other people who knew about the prints besides Penny and you and me was Walt Bodine and Frank McNally. I'm sorry, Doc. I guess I shouldn't have done it. But I told everybody in town about you lifting the prints. I figured it was the only way I could make them agree to being fingerprinted. I see. It's such a newfangled notion, they're all afraid of it. Maybe if we could get some of the town's leading citizens to agree to be fingerprinted, the rest would go along. Who, who you got in mind? Well, Frank McNally, for instance. As president of the bank, he carries a lot of weight. Frank McNally? Yeah. All right, let's go see him. Frank, we're here to ask a favor. Yes? The sheriff's having a little trouble getting people to agree to be fingerprinted. We thought, uh... If you'd have yours taken, maybe the others would cooperate. I see. Well, I'm not interested. Why? You don't have anything to hide, do you? Of course not. But that's it exactly. I'm not guilty of anything. Why should I be fingerprinted? We're not accusing you of being a criminal. We're just... Now, look. No matter what you say, if I'm fingerprinted, I'll be looked on as a suspect. That'd be bad for the bank. Now, on the other hand, if you... Pardon me. Uh, I'm wanted down at the vault. Will you excuse me for a few minutes? Maybe we better forget about this fingerprint business, Doc. I'm not giving up yet. I wonder why he turned us down. Look, here's a set of his prints right here. Those little 
curly cues in the middle. Yeah. That scar on the center finger. Uh-huh. These prints match. What's the idea? Your prints here. They match the ones on Tennessee's desk. That's impossible. What would I want to steal from Tennessee? $90,000, maybe. That's ridiculous. I'll take him down to my office. Maybe he'll tell the truth. No. Those are not my prints. Here, look. I can't reach that. All right. Take my fingerprints. You'll see they don't match. We'll take your word for it, Frank. Do you remember anyone who visited you today who stood right about here? Well, how should I know? There have been a lot of people in here. Maybe you can help me. Yes, sir. Did you happen to see a man in here at this desk who might have stood about like this? Well, yes. A man came in and put his hands on the desk just like that. Who was it? Mr. Bodine. Walt Bodine? Are you sure? Positive. Is that all, sir? Yes, that's all. Thank you. Now, do you remember, Frank? By George, yes, I do. And I can tell you another thing. Walt had a good reason for killing Tennessee. What do you mean? Well, I happen to know that he needed money to keep the ranch going. He tried to borrow it from me, but the bank directors turned him down. Right after that, he started courting Tennessee. Go on. Well, my guess is that he borrowed it from her. Then when she decided to retire, she asked for it back. Walt shot her when he couldn't pay off. Sounds reasonable, Doc. Tennessee must have had a record of the loan, and that's what Walt stole from the desk. I think we better pay a visit to Walt's ranch. Thanks a lot, Frank. See you, Frank. Good luck. What's this all about? We want to go with you, Sheriff. Tennessee was our friend, too. But I don't need you. And besides, we're not sure it was Bodine. Well, it sure won't hurt for us to come with you. Bodine's got a lot of men working for him. And if he is guilty, he'll put up a fight. We got a lot more friends waiting out of town. All right. Come along. on his way out here to take your fingerprints. Oh, don't get so excited, Frank. I won't let him have them. Don't be a fool. If you don't let him, he'll take you in on suspicion. If you do let him, he'll tie a rope around your neck if Tennessee dies. Catch a freight train out of here and lay low for a while. And what about the ranch and the money? Don't worry. I'll sell everything and keep your half safely in the bank vault. No, Frank. I have two gunmen for every one the sheriff has in that posse of his. Tom, I want you to get the men armed and get them down to the north fence line right away. Sure thing, boss. for every one of you to turn this posse back. It's a good thing we come along, Sheriff. They're waiting for us. Come on. I'm a, I'm gonna 
check down the line and see how many of our men got hurt. <laughs> Not with you fellows. We're after Walt Modine. Where is he? We don't know. He took off. Sorry, I got here too late. Any of you men know where Bodine went? Haven't any idea. Maybe I can help you. Yeah. It was from a distance, but I saw a man riding toward the railroad tracks. Now, if it should happen to be Bodine, remember he's dangerous. Have your men shoot to kill. Jim! Ed! Bodine's headed for the railroad! <laughs> Let's get up the ranch. See if there's any more. I think we'll have any trouble getting Tennessee's money back. That means we can take her to San Francisco for the operation. I'm afraid not. We'll have to wait till she regains consciousness. Let's hope that won't be too late. Penny, I'm going to break a sacred promise that I made Tennessee a long time ago. I think she'll forgive me. Tennessee Smith is your mother. Penny. Let her go. I know where she's gone. Tennessee's operation was a success. On August 30th, 1898, Walt Bodine and Frank McNally were sentenced to 20 years for the attempted murder of Tennessee. Their hired gunmen were sentenced to hard labor in the state penitentiary along with them. <laughs> 